What's going on everybody? If you're new, I'm Cam. Welcome to the Print Life. Roll the credits. Yeah, today is officially Cameron starting the vlog up again to some degree. Not going to be a daily thing, but figured I'd get back at it. This is what I'm doing right now. I took the desk out of here, and I'm just trying to organize all this trash. Grab a bag of popcorn, maybe a soda pop, sit down and watch me clean my office. This suitcase is the case that I bought to try to stuff the flash, the mobile flash dryer in. So this is too big. So now I've had to try to find a different case, which is surprisingly difficult to find one tall enough, wide enough, deep enough, but that's not too big. We're also having issues with our dryer. Let's go see if the dryer is overheating or not. This will get up to temperature, but like no matter what temperature this says, it seems like it's coming out of here at like 500 degrees. Solid state, probably. Where's those relays at? By the way, we're gonna try to turn this way the fuck down and see if that helps. We had the tech out last year, and here's what he told us. He took a couple of hours, did nothing except like pop the case off the electronics box, uh, and then just told us that everything looked good. It was never fixed. So, because of my experience with the technician on that, because of how old the dryer is, I'm strongly just considering getting a brand new one. Either way, that's gonna put us out weeks man I don't even know I'm not sure what we're gonna do I gotta look into it I may have figured a workaround hey, a shut up is at least check the fuses you know what I mean what if it's something as stupid and simple as a fuse yeah that'd be funny fuses are good the first thing that I always do just out of it's like a force of habit is I'll, I'll visit the used site like digit Smith just to see if there's any really smoking deals but most of the time the crap, it, the things on there for sale are garbage that a shop is trying to get rid of because it's broken in some way. But sometimes you'll find it from a shop that's just going out of business and then the equipment's like in really good shape. So here's an MNR 2007 MNR Fusion Dryer. A lot of good stuff on here, but it's not right for me. Okay, so I do have some good news. Alex just informed me that the dryer just magically started working again. So at least we can get today's shit done. As usual, we are out of supplies, so I'm taking a trip to the supply house to get them what they need. Because I've been sitting on my ass so much and eating like shit, I've been getting... Anyway, I have started a workout regime only three days a week, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, uh, just doing like heavy weightlifting. No dieting or anything yet, just lifting weights. I've been doing that for the past couple of weeks. All right, I just got to advanced screen print supply. Just... Oh, oh God, except for the one that you posted yesterday. Yeah, well, that was my first live feed. It was oh, brutal. Okay. <laughs> You're all turn it off. You little monster. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Right, bye, Becky. Bye. See you next time. All right, sounds good. I started at Multicraft because it's closer to where uh, my shop is located. It's in Phoenix. And then when I heard about Advanced Screen was when I was looking for a water-based ink, which was, you know, quite a little while ago. And they were the only supplier in town that had water-based and discharge, so naturally, this was the place to go. But they carry everything I need, but because I started with Multicraft first, I've designated all of my uh, Plastisol purchases and anything like that to them, and I pretty much come to Advanced just for the water-based shit. Now let's get my happy ass back to the shop so that I can resupply the guys and so that they can get back to production. But first, yeah, I just had to make a quick pit stop because my shit was like hella on E. I was gonna run out of gas. So you remember how I was talking about getting into shape earlier? Come on. That's dedication. Old discharge, huh? Yeah. But way to figure shit out, guys. That's that's it good stuff. Makes a big difference. All right. Well, I'll order us a little fridge, and what? We'll just put it. Try to get it like over here somewhere, maybe. Yeah. 
The guys in the shop have figured out a very neat trick to printing discharge and water-based. But I shall not share it with you. I'm getting greedy with my information. I'm just kidding. Let me go ahead and share it so that you guys can act like you already knew that anyway. Here's the secret. Putting a mini fridge next to your ink station so that when you pour it, put it right back in the fridge. Use it, put it right back in the fridge. That way you keep the ink cold. The cold seems to keep the uh, moisture in the ink longer and it prevents it from evaporating. It all makes sense. Sounds like some pretty straightforward science. All right, now you can go back to pretending like you already knew that. I'm running through the YouTube comments real quick before I dive into the thing, just get, to get that out of the way. And uh, Kasmin Wells asks, do a video on how to make frames. So I figured I would just uh, touch on this in this vlog. Uh, so here's why you do not want to do that. Maybe you do. Let me tell you my story and we'll go from there. When I first started screen printing, I was trying to cut corners and save, mo save money like in whatever way I could, right? As I'm sure many of you are, which is why you ask these kind of questions. So I tried taking two by fours, hammering together, making a frame, buying my own mesh, which is actually pretty goddamn expensive to buy it in bulk or any, even just sheets of it. And then I'm trying to stretch it and glue it and staple it. And I'm trying all these different things. Nothing is working. When I do finally figure it out, I can't get the mesh tight enough. The only way that I've seen you get the mesh tight enough is if you buy a stretching table. That is a piece of equipment that costs a lot of money, which I'm assuming because you're trying to cut corners, you don't have that right now. So here's my advice. It's a pain in the ass to stretch and make your own screens. Just buy the static aluminum screens from one of your, from your local supplier or online, wherever, and then just take care of them when they or when they pop because they do eventually pop you can take that frame and get it restretched for less than the cost of the original frame that is my advice take it or leave it but uh, making your own frames in my personal opinion is a huge hassle that it's just not worth the headache okay so this is what I was hoping it was check it out I'm talking to myself not you pal Cheer, 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 cheer. So this is the last piece of my live feed thing. I just keep buying shit. I really need to. I need to stop. But I've been get. I've just been really. This feels janky as fuck. Knox brand microphone stand. Not the best podcast setup, but for now, we'll take it. You see what's going on. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're a fan, if you enjoyed this shit, subscribe, like, share it on your social, and then ding the bell so that you're notified when my happy ass uploads to this godforsaken YouTube channel. Uh, also, a reminder, we are now doing live Q&As Wednesdays. I think next Wednesday I'm going to do it at 3 p.m. Just to test it out. So tune in next Wednesday at 3 p.m. for the live Q&A. You guys are awesome. See you on the flip side, print fam. Yeah.